Okay, the next setting on the uh, dial is microfarads and ohms and continuity. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how to test a capacitor. That's what you would need the microfarads for. And for that, what I went ahead and did was took the tips off of the leads and I put the alligator clips on. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to make sure that we drain that capacitor. So I'm going to set this down real quick and disconnect the wiring on here. And it can give you quite a shock if you don't do this. So I'm going to go ahead and drain them out. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect my leads to the capacitor. All right, it shows that it is measuring at six microfarads. And what we need to do is take the capacitor off and see what it is. So we know that the actual uh, microfarads on this capacitor measured out to be six microfarads. And you've got to be within 10% of that rating. Now, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off. The actual microfarads uh, on the capacitor is 7.5, so this capacitor needs to be replaced. All right, so the next thing on this is we hit select, and we can go up to ohms and continuity. Now, one of the things that you'd want to do with ohms and continuity, of course, is to check and see if you've got a short in a wire or a broken wire. You can check for that. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is actually check the uh, contactor outside because that does, believe it or not, create a problem in the winter time. Uh, if you've got a fuse on the board and the fuse is blown, that's probably one of the first things that I would check is to see if your contactor outside is shorted out. And you can easily do that right here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our yellow wire and we're just going to disconnect the, the two wire off of it going to the outside unit so we have that disconnected and then we're going to go ahead and grab the other wire which is going to your common and we're going to take that and disconnect that as well Now what I want to do is measure continuity. And see how many ohms I've got. If this was shorted out, we would definitely know it this way. Uh, another thing that we could do is we could actually see if we have a short in this line simply by taking and connecting to the ground and going from this one to ground, and I'm going to go up to the um, continuity, we're going to check it, take the other wire, I'm going to go to ground, and we're going to see there's nothing. So we know that this wire isn't shorted out. All right, the next is receive. So what I'm going to do is sync this up to a wireless transmitter, uh, the ET2W that it comes with. So for that, I'm just going to go ahead and take these off set those aside and for this uh, I want to go ahead and show you the wireless capabilities of this so what I'm going to do um, I went ahead and grabbed an amp clamp um, the ACH4 so I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and basically what you need to do with the ACH4 when you're going to use this transmitter is it needs to be an AC uh, almost every one of the other uh, components that we use, the instruments, are all in a DC mode, but for amps you definitely want to have this in AC or it will not transmit. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in AC, and we're going to go ahead and hit sync on this, 
And then I'm going to go ahead and shut that down for a minute. I'm going to put this. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, push the sink on this. And it's going to find um, the transmitter. So you can see right now we're showing zero amps because we don't have it on anything. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, you can use this with any of the accessory heads, basically. You can turn into a wireless uh, component. So I'm going to go ahead at this time. I'll put this on the, the furnace, and we're going to measure the amps of the blower. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the white wire. So when I like to go through to measure amps, going down to the blower. I'm going to go ahead and put it on right here. I'm going to set it just like this. We're going to put the door back on. And we can see that our amp draw uh, started off around 8, 9, and right now it is currently pulling 4.2 amps. Okay, the next, of course, is off, which, of course, you know what that does, turns it off. Then we have amps AC. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take an amp draw. Basically, we'll do an amp draw on this uh, inducer. Let's go ahead and put it. Same way, put it on the common wire and we'll press the button in and see how many amps it does pull. At startup, it's going to kick back off, but it looks like it pulled uh, 4.7 start and it's running at uh, 2.4 amps. So we know how many amps this is actually pulling. Alright, the next is volts AC. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and hook the leads back in. And we go ahead and do a uh, voltage test, and for that I'm going to go ahead and twist this around, just uh, hook it onto the wire, and let you be able to see what we're testing. And a couple of reasons why you want to test volts, of course. You want to make sure polarity is correct. Uh, one way to do that is to go to, just go ahead and press this in, we're going to go to uh, the red wire right here and we're going to go to ground and if we get a reading then we know our polarity is correct go to common and ground if we get a reading we know our our polarity is wrong so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and for that you know what i'm just going to go ahead and put uh one of the uh, alligator clips back on and clip it to the case okay all right so I'm going to push this in, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on R, and I'm getting 27 volts. So I know my polarity is correct. If I was to go to common and get voltage, I would know either A, it's not grounded, obviously, or B, my polarity is, is incorrect. Another one of the tests that you want to perform on uh, volts AC is you want to make sure that you've got a good common wire coming in as well as line voltage because if you have a bad common wire you've got a bad common connection your board will act intermittently and you could you know misdiagnose a, a board real easily if you don't check for voltage correctly now you can check it at the board or you can check it you know anywhere here this is a very simple area to get to so I'm gonna go ahead and connect it there and I'm gonna go ahead and set my meter up right here and disconnect because that's easy to get to and I'm going to go ahead and go in here. Okay, so we can see at this point we have 124 volts going from actual common wire to the line wire. Now, you can't test voltage just going from the line wire to ground. That's just going to tell you you've got a good ground. Uh, but to test it, to actually test your voltage coming in, you need to know if the, the common wire is good and if the, the line voltage is good. So going from common to line is a proper way to test that. You can easily misdiagnose a board uh, if you've got a bad common connection because your board will act funny. And if you're going to go from hot to ground, you'll think that you've got plenty of voltage but the board's not doing right. So you always want to verify common to line wire, you know, your hot coming in. Um, the other thing is we have 
Hertz on here, so I'm going to go ahead and select Hertz. Press the select button, and we go up to Hertz. And I'm going to do basically the same thing. Now, if you're sure that you've got a good uh, voltage coming into your house, you can see this is 60 hertz. 60 hertz is what you need to have coming into your house. If you have anything less than that, then what you're going to want to do is call your uh, local electrician or your utility company. Uh, the next setting is volts DC. And on this particular furnace, you're not going to need that measurement. Um, there are some furnaces out there that do have DC boards, and you would use that to measure that. Uh, following that, of course, is the non-contact voltage. And in this, of course, like any non-contact voltage, I'll just go ahead and disconnect this real quick, you can go around and see if there's voltage coming in. And you can see, just by a quick check, that I do have voltage. A couple of things to note, um, the voltage coming out of the um, flame sensor is usually between 60 and 90 volts. Uh, most of the time it's around 90 volts. So if you suspect a problem with the board or the flame sensor, this is a real easy way to rule that out. I'm going to go ahead and push this in and I'm going to put this up here to the flame sensor wire. This goes up to the flame sensor and that is telling me that I do have voltage. Now, if I didn't have voltage, um, then that would tell me either A, I've got a shorted out uh, flame sensor, or B, I've got a problem with the wire, or C, I've got a problem with the board, because you will be getting some voltage coming out of there.